I'm a young man who's come out of a home of quite a lot of abuse. There was physical abuse going on between my mother and father, and mainly it's because of the alcoholism of the stress of life for a blue-collar or white-collar sort of worker and his wife who was uppity all the time. She didn't always appreciate my father, and that's probably part of the situation. But as I grew, as I aged, as I observed them, and now share the story with you in honesty and transparency, the truth was she would often egg my father on. I could almost always tell when I came home from school, work, or college, or any outing, what level or what number Manhattan my folks had had at that time. It usually didn't take more than two or three powerful things my father had made from their little bar in the kitchen to know where things were and how far I'd have to go to get out of the hell. My father was a beater of his wife. She was an uppity woman who didn't always watch her mouth. She enjoyed the addiction to that skill of baiting my dad into his, well, shrill. I can make it light now because my father finally grew up, finally stopped doing that, and I pretty much let him know one evening if he ever did that again. It would be not the last time he lived, but the last time he was out of any type of jail cell. I made it very clear to my father that his approach to my mother was wrong, and I wouldn't tolerate it anymore. I don't think my siblings understood how much I endured through that time period. I also don't think my siblings got out of that abuse experience unscathed. I have a brother who's wayward and can't keep a fucking time schedule if his life depended on it. I have an elder sibling who is majorly into power, control, and really hoarding because of her I can't say jealousy of things, but her need for things to fill a gap. I had a sibling who got the worst of the brunt from my father a lot when we were a teenager, and she wasn't really that uppity. He just decided to pummel her a lot. We experienced a lot of hearing that, and I really wanted to kill my father for that because it was a horrible time. My sister probably got out of that a great deal, but she can be one of those that never listens sometimes. At the same time, she can be a really good listener. But what I know about abuse, that it can marvelously work itself out and then rear its ugly head much, much later in life when the brain doesn't function as sharply and people are less interested in loving people in life. I have another sibling who has as a late sibling who just wanted to use financial abuse all the time to try to control my property, my life, my records, and you know, she is married to an abuser, another alcoholic like my father, but actually worse than my father ever was in interest in alcohol, smoking, and drugs. They have produced some handsome young children. However, those boys don't know right from wrong. I would presume and assume, based on what I experienced of their constant insult to my life, now, when I share the story, when I to something of God's glory, the truth is that I tried to avoid a lot of that by simply moving out of the country and finding my own life, my own wife, my own child, and I didn't need them for the longest while. When my business went through a downturn, my father was always around to help me out because he was my proudest supporter of my life and my manhood and loved my little Japanese wife. She was a good cook. She always called him dad and openly my son called him grandpa. It was a sad thing when the children of my biological family would have their children do grandchildren photos even when my son was around. They would take those photographs and not include my child. And that was really an illness in them. When my late father died, they did the same thing to me and my Japanese wife and my son. That he was not handled and we as a couple were not handled the same way as their spouses and children were. You see, in life people want to make these distinctions. 
they want to make the distinction of who's who and what's what and you know I love my Japanese son and he will always be my number one Japanese son he will always be that son that I will miss that son that I will remiss over and the son that gave us a lot of excitement a lot of drama and a lot of love at times and in the end I became proud of my son he worked his way through to manhood through struggle and strife along with us as we did in any life but when a man loses his wife after much consternation and much prayer of Lord where do you want to take my life and when God brings into his life the right woman for all times the Lord knows how to make it clear to a man you see the Lord can produce people in our life to teach us lessons and when I was most broken after losing that woman of my dreams the one who came after my wife who left as it seems that I was not the same I had to go to a metaphysical shop where a minister the lay minister someone with a little ministry license and a totally different look at life helped me to sort of repair myself and discover more about God but it was singly the woman that I'm madly in love with that changed my whole life to the Lord she taught me a tool that changed my life and has given me such a schooling in life that I will never give it up you see the Lord God of all things and all people and all planets and all everything can teach us how to love but the Lord God puts in our soul our love for the one that's really above them all and the love that's above them all a love that even outweighs and outlasts someone we've been together for 20 years in our past is present in a life force and in a life force there's a woman who knows a man's soul but she can be tainted she can be turned she can be well I suppose spurned by other people for her attitudes about life her vanity and her desire to be a I guess what you call a trophy wife but to a man like me she is more than what I want for eternity she is a fortune in life